What's going on, y'all? 805 Just here. Just 805. I'm just going to jump right into this topic uh, because it's something I'm not only passionate about, uh, but I feel like it's it's getting a little, I don't know, misunderstood or people just, uh, I don't know. It, it, it just seems like the, this conversation that's kind of been kind of been hot the last week or last almost two weeks now, um, it, it just seems that some points are being made, but people are overlooking um, some major points, major key factors. Basically, uh, what's, what, what happened was uh, Dr. Umar, um, if you don't know who Dr. Umar is, he's a, uh, he's a, a teacher. Uh, he's a, um, a school, uh, what do they call that, guidance counselor, I believe, uh, or has been a school uh, guidance counselor. Regardless, he works in the, uh, in the school system. He, he purchased a school in Delaware. He plans to open it up. He's, he's a Pan-Africanist, so he's all about you know, progressing uh, African Americans and Black people here in America, and uh, is very seems to be very serious and passionate about his family's roots, and of course, you know, uh, our roots as a people um, that go all the way back to Africa. Um, so that's his movement. That's what he does. He does a lot of uh, speaking engagements um, and that type of thing. So uh, he was on a podcast. Uh, I would say maybe about a week ago, maybe two weeks ago now, and the topic came up about. If hip hop and hip hop culture has uh, been had more of a negative impact, you know, on the black community and, and black people as a whole, or has it been more positive, you know, in the last, you know, 50 or so years uh, going on, I guess, 51 years now uh, since, you know, kind of hip hop culture emerged out of New York and out of the Bronx. And um, I believe in the conversation, they weren't just talking about rap music, but when they were using the term hip hop, they were uh they were they were using hip hop in the place of the actual music, which is obviously you know rap music. So for me, I'm gonna go based off that. I'm, I'm not gonna say all of hip hop culture because you know for those of us who are you know fans of hip hop and even fans of rap, we know you know the pillars of hip hop include breakdance and graffiti. Like there's a whole bunch of different uh, 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 what's the word uh, corners of hip hop. The music, which is rap, is just one part of it, one aspect. But you know, hip hop includes, like I said, breakdancing, graffiti, um, you know, I I go on and on. But anyway, um so Dr. Umar was on the on the side of or his opinion was yes, hip hop culture, rap music in fifty years has had more of a negative impact on the black community than a positive one. The host of the podcast, and I guess his co-host, they did not agree. They were like, no, no, you know, hip-hop rap has been way more positive. There's, you know, so much money has been made, blah, blah, blah. I'll cut right to the chase. For those of y'all that know me, or for those of y'all that may not know me personally, but have maybe followed me, or, uh, you know, we've interacted in the last, you know, however many years since social media, you know, really got started, Y'all probably can assume and know where I'm going with this and know what my stance is. I'm 100% on the side of uh, Dr. Umar Johnson. I'm on the side of, yes, there are great positive aspects of hip-hop culture. Yes, there are great uh, <clears throat> great positive aspects of of rap music. But if we had to do a percentage or if we had to do a comparison, hip-hop culture and rap music has by far had a more negative influence and impact on the black community than positive. And my main example is this. And just so y'all know my history, for those that don't know, uh, I was raised in a, in a, uh, I was raised, you know, in the church, basically for the most part. Uh, My grandparents have a church. Um, My mother and my uncles and aunts were all involved uh, in this church. Um, My father, um, uh, was also involved in in that church and the church he got saved um, at um, in Oxnard, uh, California, eight hundred five. What up, uh, West Coast, Central Coast? Shout out to everybody there. Um, so growing up in my household, there was no, you know, listening to, you know, in the late nineties or you know early two thousands, Biggie or you know DMX or you know whoever you know was popular. You know, in in my youth, you know, when I was, you know, not an adult, so late 90s, uh, early 2000s, mid 2000s, um, anybody you can name that was not allowed in my household. And I grew up, that was the norm. Like I was used to, you know, my friends, you know, being in high school and whatnot, being in college, even in college, um, just because at that point it, it became a way of life. 
uh, you know, I had friends who listened to Wayne, uh, Jay-Z. I'm trying to think who else is, uh, or who else was, you know, Big Nelly. Just anybody who, you know, was popular or, you know, has been popular um, in hip hop culture and, you know, has had, you know, popular rap albums and whatnot. I wasn't listening to that because I was raised that that's not how we get down because the message they're pushing or the things they're saying, not only is not our lifestyle, but, you know, obviously because of my religious and spiritual background as a believer and, you know, being raised in a Christian household, you know, that doesn't match up with how we live. That doesn't match up with what we're trying to do and what we're trying to push. So for me growing up, the rap and the hip hop that, uh, I was, uh, if not allowed to listen to, but was normal for me to have in rotation that maybe wasn't, you know, a, a Christian rapper per se, or, um, you know, uh, cause I, my parents, you know, they're from the old school. My father's a sixties baby. My, my mom was born in the early seventies. So there was a lot of old school, you know, my dad put me and my brother on to a lot of old school. So we listened to oldies on a regular basis. Let's listen to classic uh, R&B, listen to jazz, you know, so it wasn't like, oh, just because I can't listen to Tupac or I can't listen to, you know, whoever, like I said, DMX, Biggie, just because I can't listen to that, that doesn't mean there wasn't good music or, you know, good good vibes in the house, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't that type of, you know, level of strict, strictness in my opinion. So for me, I grew up on classic 90s hip hop, 90s rap, golden age rap that was positive, that was good energy. So for example, still to this day, I'm, I'm you know, fans and listeners of these people, but growing up in, you know, being in middle school and high school, I kept these people specifically in my ro- rotation on a regular, cons- consistent basis. So that would include uh, De La Soul, uh, Tribe Call Quest, uh, Jungle Brothers, uh, Little Public Enemy. And so as I'm saying these, y'all probably thinking, okay, you know, these are groups from the nineties or some even, you know, the mid eighties. So yeah, I was listening to, uh, music or rap groups or rappers that were really the generation before me, but you know, it's classic, it's classic rap, it's classic, uh, hip hop. And a lot of it is, is positive. A lot of it is good energy. A lot of it, there's not even, uh, uh, profanity, not, not even cussing. And so obviously I came from a household where, you know, my parents, we didn't use, you know, we didn't, we didn't cuss. My parents didn't cuss. You know, they still don't cuss. They, you know, I don't use profanity. So obviously I wasn't, you know, going to be listening to or even allowed to listen to that type of music anyway. But so, yeah, I grew up and was raised and was uh, put on to classics, to legends, Rock Rakim, uh, uh, Big Daddy Kane. Like these are people that I was very familiar with early on where maybe I had friends and teammates who, you know, they were on whoever was, you know, popping or whoever was, you know, really uh, relevant at that time where I was listening to, you know, older um, acts or acts who were maybe not as relevant anymore. But, you know, they're legends, KRS-One, you know, uh, people like that. So um, with that being said, uh, I for years have seen the difference between, you know, when rap really first blew up, when hip hop culture really blew up when they thought it was just going to be a fad in the 80s to how it transitioned in the 90s and then the mid 90s, late 90s and then 2000s and then where we are here today in uh in in 2024. And from my point of view, I'm fully I'm fully in the corner, I'm fully on the side of uh rap music and hip hop culture has negatively impacted uh, the black community and black people way more than the positive the upsides. Now, there are upsides. Like I said, the groups that I mentioned, these are classic or legendary groups or rappers that, you know, had a message that were saying something or weren't talking about, you know, shooting people and killing people, stabbing people, you know, selling drugs to the black community. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, uh, um, degrading women, you know, calling women out of their name, calling women, you know, the B word, that type of thing. So, Uh, I think y'all probably see where I'm coming from. Y'all get my point. I don't want to be repetitive. Um, but I, to me, I don't understand how it's not obvious that, that this is the case. When we talk about just some of the things that plague typical urban black communities like drugs, uh, gang violence, uh, uh, domestic issues, like how much of the music promoted that and still promotes that to this day. Now, am I saying that everybody that's, that gets shot or, or shoot somebody, it's because they listen to, 
you know, a certain rapper? No, I'm not saying that. Am I saying that everybody that has a domestic issue or uh, everybody that, uh, you know, sold drugs or was a drug dealer or is a drug dealer is because their favorite rapper, you know, influenced them to do that? No, but do those rappers and do, does that music influence black people and the youth specifically? Absolutely. We know this. So um, for me, I don't get it. I don't get how there's even an argument against that. I don't think it's a slight. Like, I don't think it's a bad thing, but just look at the music. Like, if you ever read the lyrics of maybe some of your favorite rappers or rappers who uh, are more of that genre where they're, you know, speaking about negative things. And even, you know, I get it. We've heard the excuses over the years. Oh, I'm speaking my experience or, you know, this is how I grew up. This is how I was raised, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you can tell a story. You can be a storyteller without uh, uh, degrading people, without encouraging or promoting something or uh, shedding light on things and making it seem like it was like it was a positive thing. We see that we've seen that throughout the years that how many artists and how many rappers are there that have told their story or have told their uh, upbringing without, you know, having to call women out their name or without having to say, I made this much money from, you know, selling this much crack or selling this much you know, whatever in the hood, you know what I'm saying? So it's just annoying to me because I think it's one of those things where uh, those who are not on my side or not, who don't agree with me, they're in denial because it's like how many hood movies, I mean, even if we're not talking rap, rap music and hip hop culture, what about just, just hood movies that are considered hood classics, like Menace to Society, uh, like uh, Juice, like these are movies where the violence is tied in with hip hop culture or tied in with rap music or tied in with gang violence. And it's like, so you mean to tell me rap music, hip hop culture had nothing to do with, you know, even though these are movies, but you know, we know that these things happen in real life. So uh, for me, I don't get it. You know, like I said, a lot of podcasters and personalities out there um, have spoken on it. Joe Budden spoken on it. He's going against, he doesn't agree with Dr. Umar and others as well. Um, I don't understand that. I don't get that. And just because maybe you're a former rapper or just because you enjoy rap music, it doesn't mean you have to not acknowledge that there has been a negative influence that rap and hip hop culture has had on uh, the black community and black people, specifically the black youth, because we know uh, rap and hip hop is a is is is, uh, you know, they say it's a young man's game. Obviously, we know there's uh, women and female rappers and artists and whatnot, but uh, it is a young, it's a young generation uh, trend or a young generation genre where, you know, people like me still listen to, you know, Tribe Called Quest and De La Soul and, you know, Rock Kim and, uh, you know, all these, all these artists that are more legacy acts or legacy artists now. But, you know, it's every year there's a new crop or a new group of young, you know, rappers or young hip hop artists that come out and, they're they're being um promoted or their their career is thriving because of the youngest generation that's pushing them along you know what i mean it's the high schoolers it's the junior high kids that are bumping whatever this new music is so that's my opinion on it i just had to speak on it because i keep hearing about it and so many podcasts and shows are talking about it and i don't understand just how someone could be on the opposite side like i said I'll, I'll end with this. It doesn't make you a bad person to acknowledge something like this. Because if I had to do an analogy, and I'll do this last analogy, and then I'll be done. I'll shut up. Uh, it's like this. It's like if someone asked, in your opinion, in history, in the history of guns, gun history, have there been more negative events in the world regarding guns? Or have there been more positive events in the world regarding guns? And this is an easy this is an easy question. Should this easy question should have an easy answer. And this doesn't matter if you're a fan of guns, if you're a gun owner, or if you're against guns, or if you don't own guns, or you you know you're you you don't support, you know, gun rights and things like that. It's just a simple question. Just observing history, have there been more negative things that have happened, negative events, negative negative uh activities with guns or has there been more positive? If you answer negative, then you understand where I'm coming from with this rap music thing, this this hip hop culture thing. So obviously me being a fan of rap, for those that have you know been following me for a minute or know me personally, I put out a rap album, I think I want to say a year or two years after college that did pretty well. Um, 
and a couple singles that you know did all right too. Uh, so obviously, I'm a I'm a fan of certain rap music and certain rappers, and I'm uh, ingrained and was raised in hip hop culture and the hip hop world, um, and I have knowledge of these things. But that doesn't mean I can't acknowledge and say, hey, there is some garbage out there. There is some stuff that throughout history. I mean, we just saw the Diddy situation blow up a few months ago. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, come on, man. You can't you can't see all these examples and say, eh, nah, nah. Hip hop and rap has been all good for the last 50, 51 years. Nah, not true. Wrong. Do your research. Do the history. And, you know, you make the decision for yourself. But that's my thoughts on it. Anyway, I appreciate y'all. Uh, thank y'all for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for the views. And uh, listen, another day, another video. All right. Peace, peace.